All right, I'm on the next page. Number three, the table below shows the total cost in dollars of purchasing in battery packs. So we've got a table, number of battery packs, total cost. And it says to determine the value of f of 18 and tell what it represents in this situation. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to notice that the value of f of 1 is 490. And I'm going to look at the table and I'm going to notice that the common difference is 4. So I'm going to use those two items to write an explicit rule. And then I'm going to take that explicit rule and I'm going to substitute in 18. So 490 plus 4 times 17. Why 17? Because remember it's n minus 1, so 18 minus 1. And when I do all of that, I get $72.90. Okay. Modeling arithmetic sequences from a graph. So if you're given a graph of a real world situation involving an arithmetic sequence, you can construct a function model and use it to solve problems. So what they did is they gave you a graph. From the graph, you can construct a table. So DeAndre collects feather pins. The graph shows the number of feather pins that DeAndre has collected over time and weeks. According to this pattern, how many feather pins will DeAndre have collected in 12 weeks? All right, so you take the information from the graph, you put it on the table. I notice that from 18 to 37, that's a difference of 19, difference of 19, difference of 19. So the common difference is 19, so I need that information. I also need to notice that f of 1 is 18, because I'm going to use that. Um, to write my general explicit rule. Okay, so here's your general explicit rule format. You need to put in 18 for the f of 1 value. You're going to put in 19 for your common difference. And there you go. And then uh, they want you to tell them how many feather pins he's collected in 12 weeks. So you're finding f of 12. So I just put in 12 for my n. 12 minus 1 gives me 11. So 18 plus 11 times 19, which is 209. And after 12 weeks, DeAndre will have collected 227 feather pins. All right, here's another example on page 174. Eric collects stamps. The graph shows the number of stamps that Eric has collected over time and months. According to this pattern, how many stamps will Eric have collected in 10 months? Okay, so you can take the points from the graph and you can construct a table from them. And then look at the table. Notice what the common difference is. In this case, the common difference is 13. F of 1 is 20. Common difference is 13. All I do is I take those things and I put them into my explicit rule. So 20 plus 13 n minus 1. And then it asks to determine the number of stamps Eric will have collected in 10 months. So we're going to find f of 10. So put f of 10 is equal to f of 1, which was 20, plus 13 times 9, because remember it's 10 minus 1. So if this pattern continues, Eric will have collected 137 stamps in 10 months. All right, how do you know which variable is the independent variable and which variable is the dependent variable? Well, you can kind of get a feel for that. I mean, which one is determining the value of the other one? But also, in an arithmetic sequence, generally your independent variable in, in at least the situations that we've seen so far, it's going like 1 and then 2, 3, 4. And the dependent variable is increasing at a set rate as well, but it's increasing by that common difference. Okay. 
Okay, we're going to go down to your turn. Construct an explicit rule in function notation for the arithmetic sequence represented in the graph and use it to solve the problem. Okay, so they've just given you a graph this time. So we're going to have to take the information from the graph. We're going to have to kind of work backwards. So the first thing I'm going to do is construct a table. And then I'm going to figure out common difference, although I can probably eyeball it from the graph, honestly. Um, and then we're going to find the height of the stack with seven boxes. All right, so there's my table. I did mine vertically. You can do yours horizontally. It really doesn't make any difference. Um, my f of 1 value is 34. And I'm noticing that my common difference, d, is 17. OK, so I'm going to use those and put them into the explicit rule. All right, there's my explicit rule, 34 plus 17 n minus 1. And then we're going to find the height of the stack with seven boxes. So f of 7. All right, so that's really 34 plus 17 times 6. All right, 17 times 6 is 102. Yeah, because 15 times 6 is 90 plus another 12. Okay, um, all right, plus 34, and you get 136. So the height of the stack with seven boxes is 136 inches. All right, Quan begins to save the amount, same amount each month to save for a future so shopping trip. The graph shows total amount she saved after each month in. What will be the total amount Quinn has saved after 12 months? All right, so we just have four points on the graph. Um, first thing I'm going to do is this, 1 and 250, 2 and 300, 3 and 350, 4 and 400. Okay, it becomes pretty obvious that the common difference is 50 and my first value is 250. Ooh, I'm running around a room. Okay, 250. And then I'm going to put it into the general explicit rule. f of n equals uh, whatever the f of 1 is, which is 250 plus 50 n minus 1. All right, so what will the total amount be? after 12 months. So we're finding f of 12. 250 plus 50 times 12 minus 1, which is 11. 11 times 5 is 55. So 11 times 50 is 550. And 550 plus 250, last time I checked, was 800. Okay, so after 12 months, I've saved $800.